Hello and welcome to another You Won't Believe Top 10 Best Prank Gone Sexual Reaction Let's Play Unboxing Mashup Collab Speedrun Review Q&A Video where you're guaranteed lame jokes, phony acting, and massive spoilers to games, products, and movies you're gonna want to experience for yourself. So forget what you think and remember to like and sub even though you haven't even seen the video yet. Let's hop in, shall we? I'm not gonna lie, this is totally me when I animate. Welcome to the next Q&A video. Way overdue. So let's begin. The Potato Llamas asks, Do you have any deleted characters? Here are the ones that I can remember. There was going to be an evil wizard NPC at one point that the heroes were going to stumble upon. At the time the game added witches and dragons, it seemed Mojang was steering towards more medieval concepts like this. So I had this idea prepped, but it never came to fruition. Milky Dad was the idea that replaced this character's concept though, as he sort of lives in a wizard's tower. Milky Dad was originally going to be sporting traditional 1920s gangster attire and have some sort of Boston slash Jewish mother accent. He was gonna sound a lot like this, but I think it gave away too much of his double agent routine. I wanted him to sound a little more innocent, as they say, so I scrapped it. In the end, I went with a more friendly Joe Pesci approach. I'm gonna stick her in a frickin' hole in the frickin' desert! You f me up over there, I'll stick you in a hole in the frickin' desert. You understand? Who didn't uh, apologize? As of version 1.9, there were a lot of rumors going around that Mojang was going to add writable dragons into the game, and I thought that was going to have something to do with the dragon egg. Fart was going to have his own baby dragon if this had happened. This is also why nothing ever came of that item in the series. Fart was also going to run across a zombie pigman in the nether that he thought was the reincarnation of Descartes. The pigman was also going to help the heroes track down Gaylord, but this seemed unnecessary due to the quicker pacing of the last few episodes, so I cut it. Fart Garfunkel's sister, Fartina. Hi boys, I'm Fartina. Get ready for a kiss. This was just a joke character, and I'm glad it never happened. I will never speak of it beyond this point. I can has dinner says, new video idea, Fart's guide to picking up chicks. Yeah, you know it would be hilarious. Okay. Welcome to Fart's ancient guide of unraveling the undead spirits and picking up chicks. Episode 1. The pickup line. Here's a couple of pro pickup lines that'll definitely guarantee you to get a chick's telephone digits. Let's go test it out. Hey, I, uh, think you dropped something, gorgeous. Oh, did I? Yeah, your standards. Hi, I'm Fart Garfunkel. Say, do you have a super hot boyfriend? Uh... Want one? Because on a scale of 1 to 10, you're a 9. And I'm the one you need. Are you a beaver? Uh, what? Cause damn! Ugh. You must be a pressure plate, cause you turned me on. I'd like to fertilize your crops with my bone meal! Sonic Hedgehog asks, Why is animation is hard? There's generally just a lot of things poured into animation that most people don't realize. I covered this in the previous Q&A video, so hopefully some of you have an understanding of the basics. But to sum it up, it just takes a ton of time and effort to do the smallest things. Though something like Noob Adventures is fairly basic compared to various other types of animation, one still has to abide by various principles every second to keep the animation flowing well. When compared to other types of entertainment, it's time-consuming and expensive. On top of animating, you may have to incorporate voice actors and music, so it all adds up in the end. It's also a difficult career choice, regardless of your skill level. With the way art colleges keep pumping out more artists, and now that everything is international, the landscape is constantly changing, and it's fairly difficult to get your foot in the door. Lately, I tell people that are interested in going into animation as a career to think about it critically. Do you really have the dedication to sit at a computer 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week, till your scene is done? Are you willing to move out to an area that has these type of jobs? Are you willing to gamble and take a job well knowing that it's not going to last forever? Are you willing to dedicate lots of time to freelance work over having a normal job, or juggle both? Or do you just want to create cartoons on social media in your spare time? There's a ton of questions that come with a career like this, so make sure you network with the right people and ask the questions that are relevant to you. If you're interested in animation and want some reading suggestions, I recommend The Illusion of Life, Cartoon Animation, and The Animator Survival Kit, if you want to get your feet wet. Steve Green asks a logical question. How long have Noobly Fart and Snake been playing on the server? I sat down to figure it out and found that each character's time on the server varies. In the first episode, we see that Fart and Snake have hidden underground for the night. They hadn't gone too far from spawn, so let's just say those two have only been there since the previous night. 
When they officially band together, that's when we can start chronicling their journey. I watched the whole series and wrote down how many days have passed. It totals out to be 10 Minecraft days, or 11 if you count the epilogue. So let me grab the old calculator here. Each Minecraft day is 20 minutes, divide by hours. So they've been together for a little over three and a half hours. Just for reference, the entire series is just shy of two hours and 45 minutes, if you only count one intro and the final credits scene. Vladek Hook has a question. Why you no make games? This is kind of embarrassing, but I actually did once. Kind of, sort of. I made an action RPG game back when I was in early high school. I was a huge fan of old school overhead games like Zelda, a Link to the Past, Earthbound, Secret of Evermore, Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, all those. I've always had an interest in game design since I was a kid and stumbled upon RPG Maker 2000, specifically an illegal translation of it. I was young and naive, at the time I didn't know it was illegal. I own it now, and I hope that makes up for it, but the community was pretty big back then for it, and over the course of about two years I made a game in my spare time. It sucks, but I was proud of it at the time. After I read your comment, I replayed it and tried fixing the billion bugs I ran into. Looking at the coding though, oh my god, I, I have no clue how I managed to get half of this to work. I even hit a Noob Adventures reference in there for the hell of it. You can download it in the description if you want, or maybe I'll make a video about it. Jonesy Jones asks, Do you ever play on your own Minecraft server? Yes, I do. I try to get on at least once a day to hang out and do events. The server has been sort of a passion project of mine for the last couple of years now, and I do believe it's one of the best servers out there. If Mindplex is the equivalent of New York City and Hypixel is like Los Angeles, then the TNA server is sort of that cool little college town hidden in the mountains of Colorado. Or maybe Chirac. I've gotten quite a few inspiring ideas from the community over the years, since everything from the players and the builds to the signs are just teeming with odd and funny stories. Whoever grieved the church and Nintendo will forever be damned. Damned by the divine names of the creator Miyamoto, damned by the fires of the void, and tortured by none other than Ganon or Shogoth. Sorry I did a naughty and griefed your house. <laughs> I griefed your house even if I am not a griefer. <laughs> I am bored now. I need a bottle of warm breast milk. <laughs> Welcome to DLK's trade post in real state. All welcome, except blacks. A St. Peace little Ben for baby cow, 2014 through one o'clock. I was young. Oh. Uh. To who finds this? Take whatever you want and just replant it, please. Dear Blair, I hope you know your a total do the best. No one could replace your seat, so I stop anyway. La Udni. P.S. You're a total dupe. Also, come hunt me down if you want. I don't. Bitch, you got got. Creepers are all in the jail. I'm a grants. Failed house. I fail at life. By some noob. Voted the bomb, Mella Queen. You can cut down this bit crazy as you like, but replant the saplings and Dante out all of the crazy dawn. Cool guy club room. If you're a club member, then feel free to make it look cool. Welcome to the Sexy Joker House, baby! We've got quite a few talented people on, too, who are always working on new projects. I mean, when you can change the mob fighting from this... <coughs> ...and you transform it into this... You know you're in good company. We have a lot of friendly players, administrators, moderators, and helpers, so if you want to drop by and say Everyone, hi- Everyone! I have a protest to make! I was playing on the TNA server when something happened. I randomly started going a billion MPH and was banned forever for doing nothing. I honestly was being hacked and was granted a trial. There was a website that I could go to to tell the admins that I wouldn't be guilty. I had to make an account on the website, and Falconer banned me before I could even sign into the website. People are dicks. Falconer, if you are reading this, I am Epic Nacho Chip, the kid you banned when I was the one getting hacked. You banned me before I could make an account for the website? 
I tried to log on to a different account to tell you, but guess what? You banned my internet imp too! I hope you're happy, dick. If you want to drop by and say hi, please do. We're always adding and working on new stuff. Everyone, Falconer is a dick. Just a big, fat, lifeless dick. HG567 Roblox Videos asks, When the series is over, what will you do next? Will you make a season two after the series is over? Are you thinking of making a season two of the is there series? Anything after or TNA is that point? a stupid question? A when the series is over, will I make a continuation? I've been on the fence with this question for a while, and the more I plan to do it, the more I get discouraged. I have ideas for a spin-off series, and I even had the next two episodes of Epic Loot written and ready to animate, but from what I've discovered in the last two years about the YouTube system is that it's pretty dreadful for anyone who wants to do an ongoing animated series, or, as much as I hate to say it, animation in general. You may have seen other animators bring this to light, but if not, click here for a more in-depth explanation of the issue at hand. From what I've noticed since I started is that YouTube has declined as far as independent artist support goes. The fact that Patreon is even a thing now for artists says a lot about the health of the social media scene. YouTube is a business, and any content creator is sort of one of their products in a way. So it's not entirely their fault, it's what people throw on it and what sticks. But in the recent years, I just get this mentality that they've opened the floodgates and there's just oversaturation with all mediums. Right now it's transformed into something that's not really geared towards animators. I mean, it's all about watch times and weekly uploads. Seriously? I know. I know. Blech. There you go. Good quality entertainment. After 2011, everything about YouTube went to crap. Reply, girls ruined YouTube. Not to mention because of this new system, it really put off a lot of animators to even animate for YouTube. It's no longer primary for them. YouTube's favor of quantity over quality is the reason why shitty comedians like PewDiePie are rich. I'm really starting to rethink my future as an animator. Didn't think it'd be so hard to make it on YouTube. Who am I kidding? With gamers and vloggers posting useless content, it's easy to see how the pattern of YouTube changed drastically. I really want to be an animator. I make fun of troll comments all the time, but these types of comments? These are the ones that actually upset me. Because the system isn't really designed for animators, it shouldn't discourage you from being one. You should make things because you have a passion for them, because you want to improve a skill set. Not because your sole purpose is to get popular, or to throw as many videos as you can on your channel in one day. Popularity should be the icing on the cake, and you should never step away from your passion. Even if only 10 people watch this Q&A video, I'd be happy because I know somebody probably took something away from it. The problem for me right now is it just takes a ton of time and resources to create one episode of a scripted series. There's just not enough hours in the day to get everything out as quick as I and everyone else wants. Committing to an episodic timeline like Noob Adventures is a tremendous feat, and I'm still a little burned out from doing Noob Adventures. Most people want me to do another series, but I really want to work on a few one-hit animations like I had done in the past. Will this include Minecraft-related stuff? Considering I did one in this video, probably. But we also have to speculate how much steam this game has left in it. Everyone in the grandma knows the game's a cultural icon the size of other behemoths like World of Warcraft, Pokemon, Ninja Turtles, and so forth. I may do some more random parodies in the future, and because of the game and you guys watching the series, I can finally mark this accomplishment off my bucket list. Thanks, guys. So I'll be putting more things out in the future, but like the vast majority of animators on YouTube, there might be longer periods of time between each video because right now it's no longer about the quickest release schedule for me. It's just going to be about making cool and fun things at my own pace. So if you're the type of person that expects a video out each day, then this this, this channel's probably not for you. I hate to say it. Dead channel! If you're the type of person that checks back occasionally, you might be surprised on what pops up on here. I'm totally willing to listen to what you guys want to see, so leave a comment, and I'll see what I can do. Kyle Plays MC asks, What version of Minecraft did you start in, and what got you into Minecraft? I looked through my earliest screenshots on my old PC and found that I began in the 1.2 beta version back in 2011. As far as actually buying the game goes, I have to thank a stranger on YouTube for posting a video that I can't find anymore. Years ago, I was lurking on the Something Awful forums when I stumbled upon a thread that showed off people's Minecraft creations. Some guy created a video of his giant tree fort, and it was playing Dave and Cowboy from Boards of Canada in the background. I found the concept of the game quite serene, and that was actually the thing that pushed me to buy the game. 
It's funny to think that one small random video was the seed for the TNA journey, but to whoever made that video, wherever you are, thanks a lot. And finally, final question. Sally France asks, how many times a day do you poop? 42 times. Cause I'm full of shit. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like and sub button so I can justify my existence on the internet. Also follow me on every social media site that I never update due to laziness. Some new social experiment gone sexual let's play unboxing videos coming soon, so stay tuned. <coughs> Excuse me. Special thanks goes out to Rebecca Parham for letting me use a clip of her animation. She's a talented animator, so make sure to check her channel out here. Also, a big thanks goes out to Georg Christoph Schlie and DJ Genetex for letting me use their music tracks. They're both wickedly talented individuals, so do yourself a favor and check out their music. We've got some more TNA contests and videos coming out soon, so check back when you got a few minutes, or hop on the server to say hello. See ya!